So on this question, we are given to simplify the following, uh, considering part of our algebraic expressions and also dealing with uh, part of your exponents as you, have, as you are having your revisions. It is important that you do understand questions under simplification to evaluate something in its simplest form. So we are given on 2.21, that is the two brackets. All right, so we are given 2y minus 3 into the bracket of uh, 6y squared. So this is 6y squared uh, plus 4y minus 8. There are two brackets that you're given. And we do understand that expansion of brackets can be done by considering one bracket to expand the other bracket. What is in this bracket is to expand everything in the other bracket. So let's start with the 2y. There's a 2y there. You must multiply each and every term in the second bracket by 2y. That is 2y times 6y squared. 2y times 6y squared like this. So that's 2 times 2. 6, uh, which is a 12 there, that is going to be 12y to the exponent of 3. This is y and this is y squared. So remember, you add your exponents there. All right. Uh, but this expansion, guys, I think that is our basics of our algebra. Anyways, let us multiply the 2y there. It has to multiply the 4y. That is 2 times uh, 4, which is 8y times y there is going to give us y squared. So that's 8y squared. Then the same thing, the 2y multiplies the last term, which is minus 8. So 2y times minus 8 was going to give us minus 16y. Okay? You are done with the 2y. You move on to the minus 3. As we can see, we have got a negative 3 also. It has to multiply everything in the second bracket. So that's negative 3 times 6, which is negative 18 so that's negative 18y squared. Uh, the negative 3 and the positive 4 there, it is going to give us a negative 12. So that's negative uh, 12y. Then the negative 3 and the negative 8. Negative, negative will be positive. So that's 3 times 8, which is 24. Then consider the like terms. Are we having any like terms Collect those like terms. Simplify the part of the like terms. All right, so let's figure out the like terms we have got here. Uh, this one, 8y squared, all right, is corresponding to minus 18y squared. These are like terms. The same letter, same variable, same exponent. Then we also have the part of this y here, the minus 16y on this hand and the minus 12y on this end. These two are like terms. So you have to consider the like terms, okay? This part of 12y cubed, there's nothing corresponding. Just rewrite as it is. So that's 12y cubed. Then for our like terms, remember, we've got 8y squared and minus 18y squared. So it simply means 8 minus 18, which is minus 10, all right? 8 minus 18, that's minus 10. So you're going to have minus 10 uh, y squared. Then the part of y here, uh, that's minus 16 minus 12. So you can even use your calculator, minus 16 minus 12, uh, that is minus 28. So that was going to give us negative 28 y. Then the 24 is just a constant. There is nothing to be added. They do not have any like term. So it is going to remain as it is. That is to simplify. So to simplify, guys, you have to figure out what is it that I'm supposed to do? What is it that is given there? There are brackets. Yes, I'm supposed to expand the brackets and what? Collect the like terms. Whatever that you are given, the condition has to be done in uh, simplest form. Whatever that you're going to have must be in simplest form. Anyways, let us see another part of our question. Again, to simplify, since it is there, let us just consider it also. Uh, 2.22, which is 2 to the exponent of 2n, uh, multiplied by 4 to the exponent of n, multiplied by 2 
everything over 16 to the exponent of n. So we are supposed to simplify this part of your exponents. We do understand under exponents that if the numbers are having the same base, that is in simplest form, we can consider laws that are there on multiplication of the same bases x to the exponent of a multiplied to x to the exponent of lying. If it is a division, we are going to subtract our exponents depending with the law. So the issue is having the simplest number, the simplest base. We've got a 2, a 4, a 16. Which base can we use? 2 is the simplest base. Remember I said the simplest base is 1, which is a prime number. 2 is already a prime number. You target 2, 3, 5, 7. These are prime numbers. So 2 is already a prime number. So that is our simplest uh, base that we are going to use. So our simplest base is going to be 2. So that's 2 to the exponent of 2n. There's nothing that is going to change. But here, there is a 4. So you have to change this to a 2. You have to change this to a 2. So how can we rewrite 4 in the base of 2? 4 is same as 2 squared. Remember, guys, 3 is 8 to the exponent of 4 is 16. This and that. We can just use a calculator. Try you use 2 to the exponent until you get that number. So 4 is at 2 to the exponent of 2. So that's 2 to the exponent of 2. But there's already an exponent there, which is n. So it's going to be 2n. Remember, uh, an exponent to an exponent x to the exponent of a to the exponent of b gives us x to the exponent of a, b. You just multiply the exponents. So it is just like what you have 2 to the exponent of 2. But already there's an exponent of n. So you just multiply these two. So that is going to be 2n. Then the other two, just rewrite as it is because it's already in simplest form. It's already in the base of 2. But you can just write the exponent. If the exponent is not written, it means that is the exponent of 1. 10 to the exponent of 1 is 10. 2 to the exponent of 1 is 2. 3 to the exponent of 1 is 3. Any number when raised to the exponent of 1, it remains as it is. So do not panic there. All right, let's move on, guys. We've got 2 again here. In 16, there's a 2. It is hidden. It is there. It is there. So what are we going to do to, to express that? 16, it is 2 to the exponent of a 4. But already there's an exponent of n. So it is going to be 2 to the exponent of 4n. All right. So be very, very careful. Know your exponents, guys. Know your simplifications as you are raising the numbers to a certain exponent. Like I said, multiplication, you add the exponents. So definitely in the numerator, since it is governed by multiplication, you're going to add the exponents. That is 2n. You're going to take this one, which is 2n, plus this one, which is a 1. This is happening in the numerator. But what about the denominator here where there's 2 to the exponent of 4n? A division, same basis, we subtract the exponents. So by default, or definitely, you're going to subtract the 4n at the end. This one is for the denominator. What we are seeing in the denominator, it's a division. So we subtract. We do not put it under addition. We put it under a subtraction. So this is just like we have got one thing here that we're going to have. Whatever that we're going to obtain, we subtract 4n. All right, so that was going to be 2 to the exponent of all right, let's collect the like terms. 2 plus 2 here, that's 4. So it's going to be 4n plus 1. Uh, then we subtract the 4n. Remember where the 4n came from, all right? Uh, the minus 4n from the division. We subtract the exponents. Then the like terms, 4n minus 4n. That's a 0 there. So we're going to have uh, 0 plus 1, which is 1. And any number, guys, I said, when raised to the exponent of 1, it will remain as it is. When raised to the exponent of 1, it will remain as it is. So that is what you are simply supposed to have uh, uh, had simplified uh, this question. All right. Let's see. Another question, uh, which is six marks. All right. That is six marks, meaning to say here, there is a lot to be done. All right. Very sorry for that, guys. We're going to see these softwares. Sometimes you just have to be careful. So this is what we have on question 2.23. That is a simplification. We need to simplify again. But it, what is it that you're supposed to simplify? That is the question. What is it? Let's figure out to take the six marks. There is a division here if you consider that. So remember, uh, I said when dealing with a division, introduce a multiplication there. Then you have to interchange the second fraction. So let's do that quickly. All right. So it was going to be 3x cubed minus 6x like this. This is uh, over x squared minus nine. We just took this as it is. We are dividing. We introduce a multiplication. The moment you introduce that multiplication, the second fraction 
is to interchange. 3x plus 9 is now on top. So it is going to be 3x plus 9 on top. Everything over what? This now is in the denominator. 3x squared plus 2x. This is what we have. So uh, guys, you can start by factorizing. I'm not saying it's wrong. Start by factorizing. You factorize everything. Then after that, you consider the division, introducing of the multiplication. But in most cases, you end up forgetting to introduce that multiplication because you are now you are dealing with factorization. You now forget even to interchange the fraction. Guys, once you see a division, the best thing, remove that division. Introducing a multiplication. After, then think of whatever that you can, okay, I can factorize, I can do this. It's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Okay, it's, it's, just, it's just for you to be careful. All right, anyways, let's see. Uh, the first part, uh, we can see that there are three terms. The first exponent, there is three, which is fine, but there is x here, there is x here, there is x here. So we can factor out the x, which is common. So if we factor out this x, uh, that's 3x cubed divided by x. It is going to be 3x squared. You remove one, you remain with two. Minus 7x squared divided by x, you're going to remain with 1x. Minus 6x divided by x, this is going to totally cancel. So you remain with uh, a negative 6. All right, let's leave it like this and see. Uh, that's everything over what? x squared minus 9. If you look closely, you'll see something familiar here. That's a difference of two squares. A difference of two squares, x squared minus y squared. Remember from your difference of two squares, it gives you x minus y into x plus y. This is a difference of two squares. Nine here is same as three squared. So the square root of nine is three. So we are going to have two brackets, x minus three, right? x squared and the, and the x and the three. So it's x minus three, uh, x plus three. All right, remember we're already under a multiplication. We move on. Uh, three x into, three x plus nine, sorry. 3 is common. Yeah, they're just two terms. Binomial. So just factor out your 3. A 3. All right. So that's x, uh, 3 into x plus uh, 3. Everything over 3x squared divided by 2x. You can figure out and see that x here yeah, is common. So I can factor out the x. What am I going to have? Uh, 3x squared divided by x is going to be 3x. Uh, 2x divided by x is going to be a positive 2 like this. So this is where we are. But we, we still need to figure out uh, that. Are we can we cancel whatever that we can the two brackets if they're the same uh between the numerator and the denominator you can actually cancel but if you do not want to have confusion to say i canceled here i have to cancel again try it again this one all right this one we have to consider that all right so let's put this one remember when we factored out the x you remain with the quadratic expression of uh, 3x squared minus 7x minus 6 this is what we have minus 7x we talked, guys, about different methods. So I think the easier method, guys, is the cheat method. I don't know for you. Uh, I don't know which one can be easier. The cheat method, I said, if the coefficient, because of this coefficient, it is the one that we, we are going through this cheat method because we know that we're just supposed to have two brackets direct. But we can remove this, multiply to the last term. So if we remove this, multiply to the last term, it is going to be x squared minus 7x, 3 times minus 6, which is minus 18. You took it, multiply to the last term. So it's 3 times minus 6, which is minus 18. Then this is what you do. You now have your two brackets as usual. All right? Because now the coefficient of x squared is what? Is 1. So you're going to have x here and also another x here. Then in short, what are the factors of negative 18? But these factors must add up to negative 7. The products of minus 18, two numbers, that when you multiply, you must get minus 18. We must be thinking of around 9 and 2. Minus 9 and 2, or 9 and minus 2. Between these two, there's a possibility of getting a negative 7. If you multiply minus 9 and 2, that's minus 18. 9 and minus 2, that's a minus 18. But which part, when we add, we are going to have what? Minus 7. Minus 9 plus 2, that's a minus 7. 9 plus minus 2, guys, it was going to give us a positive 7. As we need a minus 7. So the two numbers will be minus 9 and what? 2. So these are the two numbers that we need. Minus 9 and a plus 2. Then I say, since we stole 
the three, this one, and multiplied it to this. Where was this three? It was on x squared. Bring it back where x is on this answer. Bring it where x is. Bring the three. So we are going to bring back this three. Anything common in these brackets? What is common? Check it outside. The first bracket, do we have anything common? Yes, three is common here. So we're going to factor out three, meaning to say we're going to have x minus nine divided by three. That's a minus three. X plus two like this. So as you can see, guys, this number, it was our disturbance from the first to play. We multiplied it. We returned it back. And now we factored out that number, something like that. Whatever that you factor out, whether it is not that number, whatever that you factor out, guys, remove it. It is no longer part of your question. This part. Your answer is these are these two brackets here. So this factorization, the wall of this bracket is going to give us these two brackets. Uh, X minus 3 into 3x plus 2. So this is the one that we are going to substitute. Remember, guys, where are we factorizing? Okay, let's hope, guys, you are still with me. We are here. Here. This quadratic expression. We had to factorize it. So how to factorize that quadratic expression, guys? It is in your hands. Do not say there's a cheat method that I'm going to use because I'm using it here. No. Use what you understand. All right? If you understand these two brackets, uh, x minus 3, another bracket, uh, 3x plus 2 like this. We close it. So that is it, guys. This one is not to be shown. You just re you just do your calculations aside, your fake position aside. What they just need are the two brackets. So this one, guys, it is in your hands. How are you going to factorize this one, this bracket here? It is in your hands. What we just need are these two brackets. You are going to have the same brackets like this. All right. Anyways, let us just rewrite everything because already everything has been factorized completely. So it is just a repetition. X minus three times. Right. This one is just a repetition as it is three into X plus three. Everything. So that's X into three uh, X plus two. All right. This is where we are. Let us cancel as long it is between the numerator and the denominator. As long it is between the numerator and the denominator, the numerator x minus 3, the denominator x minus 3. The numerator x plus 3, the denominator x plus 3. The numerator there is x, the denominator there is x. In the numerator there is 3x plus 2, in the denominator there is 3x plus 2. We can cancel. Let me say this is just like 1, 1, 1, 1. So what a numerator, so it's just like 3 over 1. And what is 3 over 1? 3 over 1 is same as 3. There's nothing in the denominator. It is just a 1. It's just like you're left with 1. So it's 3 over 1, which is equivalent to, to 3. So questions can be like that. It's as simple as, as much revision as you can. Know the basics. Know all, all the basics. If you understand the basics, guys, this is not going to be difficult. You just, okay, this is direct. So this is it, guys. Let us uh, keep on revising preparing for the exams which are ahead of time.